Stadium Australia is the venue for this round 19 clash between the Canterbury Bulldogs and the Melbourne Storm. Glenn Lazarus leads the Storm onto the Stadium Australia surface. Mate, I, I can't wait. There's a couple of really big clashes here in, in both sides, especially the fullbacks and Rod Silver and Robbie Ross. And of course, look at the halfbacks. We go now to the Melbourne side. Anderson and Kamali are the halves, as you said. The coach naturally is Chris Anderson, as we have already mentioned. They are unchanged to the team that was named on Tuesday night. Darren Britt leads them out to the ovation from the local fans. There are plenty of them stuck away in corners of the stadium here. Take a look at their starting lineup. Silver, of course, the red hot fullback, the halves are Hughes and Stewart. That one change, Wren comes off the bench to take the place of Stone. Price goes to the front row, and Pete comes onto the interchange bench. The coach is Steve Folks. Paul Simpkins in charge, about to blow time on. As you were saying, Stephen Folks has asked Ricky Stewart to run, Ricky, run. We'll see if he does it again this evening. Melbourne defending the southern end of the Olympic Stadium. Then Lazarus says we're okay and Simpkins blows time on. Comes down to Ross and he gives it off to Kearney who brings it back to the 20 metre line. Plenty of noise from this good crowd at the stadium. As by Leads the storm in the hit-up department. Gets his first of the night. Here is Lazarus. Works it over the 30 metre line. Still 15 short. Of the halfway, Mikau gets his first touch. Good gallop as well. Strong tackle down around the legs by Clyde. On the last tackle, Swain kicking. In behind, Silva. Ooh, bobbles it at the first attempt and picks it up in the end of it. Geez, the moment there for Rod Silva. Yeah, very, very lucky there for Rod Silva. And going back to Stephen Price, who put on that chase on the hooker there. Come up a little bit injured as just now, getting back in the Canary Bulldogs line. The push in there. Melbourne Court going on with it in the tackle. As Ricky Stewart will find this Western touchline. We just see them hanging on a little bit too long there. If we won't take any nonsense like that here tonight, we'll try and speed this game up. And see some open football. Stephen Kearney had a running battle with the referee a couple of weeks ago against Newcastle. Bill Harrigan and he not seeing eye to eye on that occasion. He can have his battle, Stephen Kearney, with the men in charge. Ooh, big shot around the top there from Ben Rorty. Strong start from the second rower on Stephen Price. Well, I think it came off the ball, off the top of the shoulder first. Ten metres short as Hughes takes it forward. There we see the tackle, just a cuffing motion around the neck, and Simpkins was happy to let play continue on. Robbie Ross, the state of origin fullback for New South Wales, fields it inside his own 20. Crossing across to link up with Marcus By. A little bit of space for the winger. He takes it back outside the 30. They picked up some metres, but they went a long way across field to do so. Oh, yeah, but they, aren't they a pleasure to watch? Oh, that was a great pick up there by Steve Kearney. He got a very difficult ball pass to him. And when they get in open spaces, the back three, as we call them, the two wingers, the fullback from Melbourne, they are pl pretty to watch. Almost in the vein of Penrith, the way they like to go to the left-hand side early in the tackle count. Counter-attack coming from Kamali there as he slipped a pass to Paul Marquette. Macau pleading for a penalty himself, didn't get it. Kamali got a bit of a nudge for his trouble on the kick. Oh, and Masri now goes back, back and has trouble cleaning up, but once again it was knocked backwards. Well... Silver and El Masri can't find the handle. <laughs> can't. I don't think they've got to find as the ball. He's very, very lucky to get away with that. Even though he's facing his goal line, I thought the ball may have gone forward. Stewart, as they spread it themselves now, comes to Norton. Well wrapped up by the Melbourne defence. No metres to be found there for Canterbury. Three minutes gone, no score here at the stadium. <laughs> Brett will play it 12 metres out from his own line on the last tackle. Hughes it is who does the clearing. And Robbie Ross will pick it up in good position on the halfway line. That's what they can be having the other do in the start of this game. It has been pretty frantic. Let's get their good yards going to get a good kick. That, that then was Hughes had the kick and they took the pressure off Ricky Stewart. By will play it. Swain at dummy half as it goes to Lazarus. Across the 30 metre line. Good chance here for the Storm with still tackles up their sleeve. Nick out, turns it back on the inside. Marquette though, met. 
driven backwards by Hetherington. What a tackler he is. Kamali gives it away to Kearney, steps off that left foot. Straight and slipping behind the defence. One more tackle for them now. Close to the Canterbury line, Kamali going to the air. Pressure for Halligan. Didn't field it cleanly, but Gaia couldn't get a hand to it either. And it will be a goal line dropout. The ball coming off Halligan, according to Simpkins. Oh, he had a pretty good look at it too. The lines went on the far right hand side. There goes Kamali pulling up nice and high. Allows Matt Guy to come flying through. Well, no, it doesn't come off anyone but Halligan. That's a good decision by the linesman. Here we go. Some more pressure coming up for the blue and whites. Spent the greater part of the first five minutes on the back pedal inside their own territory. No backpedaling from Nikau as he takes it back to the 30 metre line. Strong runner, Swain, waits and gives it off to Lazarus. Ripped down low, didn't come out of the tackle all that well and he was eventually wrapped up by Hetherington and reared it. Kamali, flat pass for Marquette, beat the first tackler. Good tackle and cover by Norton. Swain, as they move it quickly, he goes to Kearney, looking to get that arm free, couldn't do so. Still tackles left for them. Inside the 10, Kamali wrapped up high there. The decoy man, Ross, as well as Hammond. Kamali, the recipient of a strong tackle. Anderson, rubbering back inside the in goal. This time, El Masri feels it cleanly and makes it back to the field of play. Well, I think Stephen Fakes has said to his forward pack, if Kamali runs with the ball, just make sure that someone takes him and take one of his runners at the same time. Tremendous defence there. This will be a penalty. They lifted him up. Lifted him up, put his head in a dangerous position. Oh, I Lift him up. You don't agree, Gary? Well, I'd like to see the front on view of that first before I make a decision. They have picked him up, but he's actually jumped in the tackle at the same time. There was no way that was going to hurt him at all. Look, they turn him over and they put him down nice and gentle. Well, as the referees like to say, here's Glenn Lazarus. And Lazo should be blown up. Well, I can't say that word that he just did say, but I agree with him totally. Well, I think the thing to consider is that the player never got to the parallel, as they like to say. He never got to the parallel or anywhere near going past it. Perhaps a tough call early on against Melbourne. The Bulldogs, though, pick up some good metres, obviously, as a consequence, as Reardon will play it. Right. Hetherington gives it off to Price. Good yard by the Bulldogs forwards. Back midfield, Hetherington. Scampus for eight metres of his own. It's Clyde waits for it. To the left, Stewart. Jinking and then passing the Hughes, and he was well wrapped up by Marquette and the cow. Price again, just pushing away from tacklers before he's wrapped up on the 30. One more tackle for them. Stewart, at first receiver, just chipping in behind the defence, looking for the in-goal area. But it's straightened up, and Ross fielded it quite cleanly in the end. Good chase from Stewart. Yeah, great chase by Ricky Stewart. You had to pull a little short, short one over the back there. Try and turn this Melbourne side around. So they get such a good roll on. Gaia goes for it. Good run. Oh, Marcus by just like that, has put the ball down cold. Canterbury will be just 20 out with the loose in the feed. We won't see this guy drop too many balls throughout the whole season, but he's come up with a mistake there, which will certainly put pressure. Steve Mortimer on his side. Well, it's ironical, Gary, that Canterbury made three uh, errors, but it was play on, but only the one error from Melbourne Storm. And, of course, it gives Canterbury a great opportunity now to set up for try. Here's Ricky running, almost got past to wear in a cow who was quick to break from the base of the scrum. 10 metres out, Silver hands it off. So it comes to Clyde, angling towards this right-hand corner. Hetherington looking for options. He goes to Britt. will take it forward for a set. And looking for the second phase there with a the dump off, but it didn't come. They are spread to the left-hand side. We'll see if that's where they go. Stewart at first receiver. Gives it away. Norton, early in the tackle count. Grubbering for the in goal, a well-weighted kick. And they will get it back for six more. I'll tell you what, they all knew that was on too. Then the Canterbury Bulldogs back line. They'd set themselves nice and deep. They bring up the Melbourne side. See that? They come up so much. Then the big chase was put on. Great little kick there. Put some pressure right on the Melbourne side. 
No yeah, doubt that it was a planned move, Steve, because Smith and Silver were flying through to chase. Yeah, great work there by Canterbury. Now they've got six players again. Of course, Steve Reardon, high work rate player coming in for the injured Troy Stone. He'll play hard all day. Just quickly, a cheerio to a mate of mine, Ruben Byrne from Lake Jindabyne. He's fighting an illness at the moment. He's 47 years of age, a great bloke. He loves his Bulldogs and loves watching his Bulldogs on pay TV. So keep fighting. Good luck to you, Ruben. We'll be happy to know they're on the attack here. Silver will play it as it comes back to Price. Angling towards that eastern touchline. Played back to the headgear at Halligan. Stewart. Flat pass for Britt. Good ball out the back as it comes to Price again. Once more, it's headgear to headgear as Halligan is wrapped up. Nine metres out on the last tackle. Crossfield bomb coming from Stewart. Pressure for Tony Martin. He didn't get there. It came off the hands. I think you'll find of El Masri in the wash-up. It didn't really matter because it was Swain who got there to clean up for the storm. Yeah, well, they'll be pretty happy with that clean up now as Marcus Bayer grabs the ball and makes a good five or six metres. Marquette. Almost back to the 20 metre line. Lazarus. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We'll have a player called out here, Stephen Price. Just for a high yeah. shot, perhaps. Oh, wait. Got it. He's straight, mate. Got him around the throat. Got to be down below the chest, right? Too high. You heard the referee. You've got to be down below his chest to make the tackle. He's coming up off his chest, I reckon, that tackle once again. Big Lazo going to the line. Turning his body. He's probably put Price off in the hitting area. He was going to use his shoulder, but then he went away from him and used his arm. Well, it is pretty much part of the course. This stage in 1999, if you miss the shoulder and go above it in the tackle, you can expect a penalty, and that's what came on that occasion. Kearney, just over the halfway line now. Storm looking to go back on the attack again. Evans, off the bench, gets his first touch of the game. No score. Ten and a half minutes gone. McCow, cut out ball. Marquette takes it to the Bulldogs 30 metre line. Fast play the ball, McCow will give it off. So it comes through the hands. Good morning, had it on to Kearney. This Bulldogs defence, which was so good last week against the Sharks, has picked up where it left off last week. Anderson gives it away, a good pass as well. Moore into a gap. He comes to Silva. They've gone 60 metres courtesy of the penalty, and Aaron Mill scores the first touchdown of the game. Well, that was tremendous football. I'll tell you what, it's all come about. The completion rates for both sides have been absolutely sensational so far, but Melbourne have completed four sets of six out of five. And what about this great ball here? Ben Anderson going to the line, puts the nice little ball out. The winger, El Masri, come flying in. Yeah, too much pace for Rod Silver. Mule goes over to score a very good try for Melbourne. Yeah, great work here by Brett Kamali too. Ben Anderson filling in for Scotty Hill. But I was pretty disappointed with Darren Smith's tackle there, you know, jumping, going for the jumper. He should have been going around the legs. And, of course, Mule has uh, improved his position uh, to give his kicker the opportunity of converting four into six. Dyer struck it to the right-hand side and won't come back. Two points gone begging there, but the Melbourne Storm with the Canterbury Bulldogs. Four points to nil here at Stadium Australia. Completion rates outstanding so far. Just the one mistake, as we said, in the game. And that comes from Marcus Bayer, but don't worry about that. That, that ball took up there was, there was a lot of power and, and pressure put on them. And in there, landing on the ball. Let it go. Then a Scott with the head here. Jumper 14, penalised. Left hand there, raking across the top of the ball. and. Well, he didn't knock it out or he didn't, isn't a little consequence. The ball came free and with his hand around the area of the ball, it had to be a penalty. Swain. Here they are again, 15 metres out from the Canterbury line, looking to extend this scoreline. Lazarus to the way to Evans. He takes it forward. Good ball out the back to Anderson. Just four metres away now. Swain at dummy half. Fan to the right-hand side. Pressure for Canterbury. Good cutout ball. Marquette, a two-man overlap. Simply it went from Ross to Geyer, and he scores the second try of the game for Melbourne. Well, they were short on that left-hand side. Melbourne's attacking right-hand side. Canterbury side really did struggle after that quick ball, and it all started with Wayne Evans getting the little flick pass out to Ben Anderson, played the ball nice and quickly, but the ball here 
hit by Marquette. Tremendous work. Robbie Ross once again gets the ball on the outside there to Gaia. So another. I tell you what, they can't score a try this team. Well, Canterbury have paid um, the penalty by not putting Wayne Evans down and offload that ball to Anderson. Great, great work there by Marquette, but also equally good work by Brett Kamali um, with a long cutout pass. Guy with a tough one. Just a couple of metres in from that eastern touchline. Strikes it nicely, but I don't think it will have the legs that fall short and perhaps the left-hand side as well. But Melbourne do lead Canterbury eight points to nil. Dennis Scott taking it forward. Got a good offload away to Brent Sherwin. Goes across the halfway line. Encouraging signs, though, for the Bulldogs, and now they get a penalty. Bingo. They've made many more metres in the last couple of sets of six than they did early on, and Stewart very quickly kicking for this Western touchline. And he finds it just 10 metres out from the storm line. Now the Bulldogs fans find their voice. Peak taking it towards the line. He got to within about a metre or so. Sherwin waits a dummy half. Gives it off to Brett. Just takes it forward for a set line. Got to keep going left, Canterbury. Stewart. Had Norton outside him. Came back to the right-hand side. Well read, though, by Matt Rua. He wrapped up Sherwin, El Masri to Stewart. Norton again, playing in that pivot role. Put the ball away to Halligan, slipped a great pass. Oh, Halligan reached out magically with the left hand. Did he get the ball down? The touch judge thinks he might have done so. He was perilously close to that eastern touch line. And now Simpkins will check with the video referee, Dennis Fagarino. Well, I'll tell you what, Daryl Halligan has already said to his teammates there, I've scored that try, don't worry about that. I'll be kick kicking for goal. Any worrying part there for Halligan did his back touch the corner post before he got the ball down. Tawira Nika coming across. Well, you can see his foot is out. He's above the line. Nothing's touched just yet. Oh. Oh, that is so hard to call. Tawira Nika has absolutely come from nowhere. You want my thoughts? Yeah. Try. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we ask? This is very difficult because it looks like the ball's been planted at the same time. And his, he's done magnificently, really, Halligan, hasn't he? Well, actually, by the look of that, oh, I'm going to give him a try for the, the, the effort that he's put in to score that try. Not that I'll go down any good with the video referee. He might be just about the best in the league at scoring those sorts of tries as well. He's done it a number of occasions throughout his career. What about his legs? Well, they're about three feet over the touchline, but look at his hand reaching out there. It's a hard angle to call from that one there, and on the head-on shot, well, it's almost simultaneous that his legs hit the ground and he places the ball down, and you have to wonder, is his leg on the line? Is it just inside the line? Did the ball get down before his legs yeah, came back to the ground? Well, Gary Warren, I think his left knee is hits the ground, but it is actually inside the white line, and then the ball gets down, so I think it is a try. There it is, the knee there. His left knee there, I think that's inside uh, the line. Well, that is just so difficult. This might be able to tell us from this angle here. Is the ball down before his knee hits the white line? Well, I agree with you, Warren. I think it's exactly the same time. And this might be a referee's call or the touches. You can make a case for a decision either way. And I think Dennis Spagarino is ready to make his. Here it comes. It's a try! Daryl Halligan, with a sensational four-pointer, gets the Bulldogs on the board. And it's Melbourne 8, leading Canterbury 4. They are dancing at Stadium Australia on the sideline. He kicks them at a success rate of 64%. Strikes it beautifully. It has the legs as well. How good is it to watch? Here's Ricky going nice and wide. Watch him. Scott Hill just spins out a couple of easy tackles here. Then Tawa Anika comes flying over from the inside, tries to take out Halligan, but he did a magnificent job, Steve Mortimer. Yeah, Gary, good work there by Ricky Stewart and Travis Norton turning around. But Gary Freeman, it, this came from Canterbury's quick play of the ball. Brent Sherwin played the ball quickly, got a penalty, and that put Canterbury in a prime position. Bye. Steps uh, past Silver. What a player he is coming back out from inside his own in goal. Gets well, a right play on. In. He's done the right thing there, Marcus right. Pye. He looked at the referee and the referee one. said play on. There was no one, one holding you down the tackle. 
about it. Well, the kick is as good as it's chased, but can it be chasing well there? Didn't nail uh, Marcus by there, and of course now it's given Melbourne Storm the opportunity to get back into the Canterbury area. Nicole will play it. Back to Swain. Down this left-hand side goes Wayne Evans. He's having a big game, isn't it? The opening 40 minutes. Tremendous offload with the right arm. Oh, big Lazo makes a nice, nice eight metres. A number of Melbourne forwards having big games. Evans, Lazarus. Kearney's been good cutting it forward, as has Macau. Silva, stands underneath it, makes a good catch. Chase as well. Doing very well there, Brad Watts getting up, cutting him down, holding him inside the 20 metre line. That's Martini. He's impressed me, sorry mate, he's impressed me, Brad Watts, especially when he's got the ball in his hand, he's looking at runners all the time, and his defence has been outstanding since he's been on the field. El Masri will play it. Hetherington, Stewart, good pass to Hughes. Equally a good tackle there from Aaron Mule. Hetherington showing it, going himself, oh, dropped it. As he came to the defensive line, Bowden was there, he picked up some big metres once again. All right. All right. The rarest of form, Jason Hetherington, isn't he? And he's come up here clutching a forearm. It was great work out of the dummy half area one. He made excellent metres and bang, I think he's done something maybe to his either his elbow or his shoulder as he comes and falls down here. Look at that right shoulder. <gasps> you see him, he st stayed right down from the word go. Pretty tough nut. It doesn't look good. Trainer working feverishly on that collarbone and the shoulder. Ricky Stewart obviously very concerned. At the moment, it looks as though Hetherington might have to leave the field. Yeah, this will be a big blow to Canterbury side, but when he come down there with a big lazo coming down on top of him, that didn't help the cause, did it? Certainly didn't. Outstanding tackle. And Russell Bowden right out of the textbook. Stripped the ball loose and wrapped up the legs in the one motion. And that is a sorry sight for Canterbury fans. Scrum okay. packs. And I'll be desperate to get again. Jason Hetherington the back out there, but... You've seen in. the injury and his in. reaction afterwards. You're doing very well to get back out there, you'd think. I'll give you a report shortly, fellas. On the job, Steve Mortimer on the sideline as ever. Tony Martin gives it away to Wayne Evans. More big metres. The replacement front rower. Swain. Wayne and Lazarus. But he's had a break yet, big Lazo. Kamali to Macau. And that ball once again, he didn't throw it. Now he does. Mule running onto it. Fires it back on the inside. Robert Ralph got there, but knocked it on. Unfortunate because Melbourne will get it back. Six more tackles coming up and still with about two and a half minutes left in this first half. Yeah, good work once again by Tawa and Nico. I thought there might have been a hit of a shepherd here. Watch him, he throws the ball. Marquette goes in between. Well, it opens up a big hole because Martinez actually looking at the player, Bowden, who's coming through. He gets the ball around the corner there. Tremendous pass. Oh, good work there. Aaron Mool is the man who flicks the ball back inside, but gets a knock on by the Canterbury player. They'll win the scrum. Watts plays it. Ross comes to Evans. Ten metres out from this Canterbury line. They'll be desperate to hang on here, the Bulldogs, just before the break. Swain to Kamali to Lazarus. See now the short on that left hand side, Canterbury. Players left and right, midfield. Nakao turns it back on the inside. Bowden trying to charge, got a ball out the back, didn't need to throw the pass perhaps. And Clyde cleans up for the Bulldogs. Yeah, and I think this coach will be very happy with that because the next play they were coming fanned out here, the Melbourne side to the left hand side. Canterbury were gone for numbers. Well, it's just an update on Jason Heddington. Dr. Hugh Hazard, the Canterbury Medico, is taking him into the dressing room to check. Here we see Bowden losing the ball here, offloading the ball back, and Canterbury coming out with it. But they're checking for a dislocated shoulder. Well, that obviously would rule Jason out for the rest of the game, and, well, perhaps for a fair while to come. Sherwin gives it away to Stewart. Looking for big metres here as the clock ticks down to the one-minute mark. Ross goes back and fields it inside his own 20-metre line. Oh, good tackle from Martini. Impressive in this opening stanza. He hasn't had much to do with the ball, but I tell you what, his defence is absolutely outstanding out there when Robbie Ross comes through. Shane Martini on screen now, doing a tremendous job. 
Mark Kent there, slow to his feet to play the ball as Geyer tries to boot the tackle of Darren Brent. He plays it back to Swain. Kamali, flat pass once again. Tony Martin it is. Plays it back to Kamali. Evans. 38 out from the Canterbury line on the last tackle. Perhaps their last of this first half, a crossfield kick. Wasn't a good one. Halligan, though, goes up, batted backwards by Matt Guyard, came down to Shane Martini. So they've hung on the Bulldogs here after a worrying start where their offence wasn't all that flash and their defence was perhaps a little bit worse. They gave up the opening two tries of the game to Melbourne, but they've hung, up, hung on and come back in this last ten minutes of the first half. And they trail by just two points at the break. As when Lazarus has a quick chat to Paul Simpkins about a couple of things. He's still talking, I think, about that very early penalty for lifting in the tackle. You're a wizard, Harry. But you don't have to be to watch your favourites anytime. Simply select your movie and enjoy On Demand. Welcome to Hogwarts. kilometers you travel in a Škoda don't just measure distance, they measure life. Make every kilometer count. Škoda. Tell us what you love and we'll show you how you can do it in the Australian Defence Force. Oh, I always pick the dodgy trolley. It really does have a mind of its own. Oh, not my car! You've got insurance, Salt. After all, you've got a lifetime guarantee on all authorised repairs from Budget Direct. And you've saved a pretty penny, too. Lifetime guarantee on authorised repairs. Insurance Salt with Budget Direct. The sun will come out tomorrow So you gotta hang on till tomorrow Tomorrow, tomorrow I See the future in a whole new light The all-electric Ionic range Tomorrow looks good So here we go again The greatest rivalry in Australian sport State of origin CG. Is it any wonder the pulse is beating a little faster right now? Origin is underway. A tantalizing oh, kick. Oh, and a miraculous try. And Queensland do it again. What a reply from New South Wales. What a moment in Origin history. What's the craziest thing you've ever done? I got for this girl. Okay, so you delete me and I delete you. You know we don't have to do this. Oh, I miss him so much. Ah, what a life. New series, Smothered, Friday, December 8 on Fox 8 or Watch On Demand. Glenn Lazarus, a couple of last words to his side. And plenty of words, of course, to say to Paul Simpkins throughout that first half about that penalty. <laughs> Lifting in the tackle. We still might hear plenty more from him in the second half, but there's a similar occurrence. Melbourne in their second half will defend the southern end of the Olympic Stadium. As Canterbury work it back outside their 20. Alley in a dummy half. Gives it away to Steve Reedon. Spent the last 10 minutes or so of that first half on the bench. Stewart. Work it. Couple off the rock to Darren Brett. Sherwin waiting, a dummy half. I think he'll see out the role in the second half with Hetherington 
pretty much gone for the match and quite possibly some time after that. Stewart. Kicking high and it comes down and will bounce up for Gaia. To his try scoring tally in 1999, of course, scored a couple of tries for New South Wales in that state of origin game at Lang Park, Suncorp Stadium, if you like. You just see the difference in the play of the ball already. Canterbury was very, very slow, which didn't allow Ricky Stewart to get a good kick in. And Melbourne's play of the ball is just a hundred mile an hour, which is allowing them to gain, you know, 40 and 50 meters on the roll. Kearney will play it. Swain, picking the time to run, did well. Coming back to Marquette, and he will play it. Comes down to Kamali. Looking across field. Pressure for Halligan. Guy are flying through all got there and oh, got a hand right? to it. Knocked the ball on, but it was a very close run thing. Oh, tremendous there. One from Kamali, seeing that they weren't going to come up to him. He ran to the line, the little kick over. Guy come flying through. I'll tell you what, if he's caught that ball, he was going to score another four-pointer. Well, fellas, good news for Canterbury uh, supporters and then certainly the players. Jason Hethington was fair that he popped his shoulder. In fact, he hasn't. And Terry Lamb just informed me that they do expect him to come out and take some uh, part in this second half of the Canterbury Bulldogs. The magic sponge. Steve Mortimer updating us. Um, Jason Hetherington's woes downstairs. I think we will need the aid, possibly the painkiller injection to get back out there, but... That is good news indeed for Bulldogs fans. Hughes. Almost to the halfway line on the last tackle. Stewart under some pressure there from Paul Marquette, who was getting up in his face. Guy gives it to Roy oh. Ross. Oh, and Darren Smith lined him up and rung his bell. Oh, great tackle there. Darren Smith knew that they were going to go wide again. Marcus Boy out to Tony Martin. The Bulldog defence line, look at this, well, he wasn't, didn't they have a clue where he was coming from And Smith, making a great tackle on Robbie Ross. Well, Gary and Warren uh, at half-time, Steve folks said, I want an improvement in one-on-one -on -one defence, that was certainly an improvement there. <laughs> in the early, in the first half, he was disappointed with their go-forward early in that half, he felt Melbourne's defence was determining how they were playing, they were dominating, he wants to see quick play of the ball, he said, the longer we can keep Melbourne scoreless, he said the fitness will, will uh, we will override Melbourne. So um, he wants Ricky Stewart also to put that ball high if they get close to the line. He'll be happy with the work of Brent Sherwin on that occasion, Steve. The market the getting out quickly and putting some pressure on Richard Swain. Where you are, where you are. He's forcing him to where kick Brent out on the full. That's the mark. Hold there, play, play it. Slight disagreement as to where the play the ball should be made. But We'll come down to Bradley Clyde. I don't know what the drama was there between Paul Simpkins right, and the players. Hands and now a bit of off. drama here between Kearney and Clyde. He's already held. Mark's up here. So a penalty. It should be a chance for Daryl Halligan to come in and try and tie this ball game up, you would think. This is what the penalty was for. Bort is the man that comes over the top and pushes Clyde down. Steve Kearney's the man around the legs. He gets up, gets a little bit angry here. There's Clyde. The slightest angle to the post. And it should be easy for the best in the business, and it is. Daryl Halligan ties us up. Eight each between Canterbury and Melbourne. Ross almost back to the 40. Marcus By. Almost 10 minutes gone in the second half. Just the two points the end of the scoreline. On to Canterbury's side of the ledger. Kearney plays it. Swain away from dummy half. Good tackle down low. It was made by Reardon. Kamoi to the line again. Another flat pass for Marquette. Second row works off the hip of Kamoi. Close to the line as well. See Marquette in action. Close to the post. Oh, ball coming backwards here. Great chance for Marcus By. He got a good pass from Ben Anderson. Beat El Masri to get to the line, and I think you'll find he scored a try. Simpkins will go to the video referee. They're going to check a number of points here. I called Nick Owl off. Well, here they're saying he called Toa and Nick Owl. Offside, get out of the play. Interesting to see here. The kick's put through. Are they onside? You see Tauri Nikau is offside just there. All the rest of the players are onside. 
So as long as he Tower and Nico stays out of the play, I don't think there's a problem. You can see he must have known he was offside. The ball's hit back by Mule. It's picked up by Anderson. Puts up a beautiful ball there to Marcus By. I thought he took his time here to get here. And I thought this man here, Darren Smith, had done enough really to hold him up. Well, this angle here will show us. Nikau was certainly within the 10 metres when the ball came down. It was batted backwards by Aaron Mule. There's the ball. Well... That's going to be a try. From the crook of his arm, but there was certainly downward pressure, I think you'll find. And you would think that Dennis Spagarino will be flashing the green light here. Yeah. So we're in the cow. Certainly was within 10 metres of the football when it came back down. He didn't have a part to play as far as interfering with a Canterbury player, but he was within the 10 metres. Bai is very happy that he scored a try back on his own side of halfway now, and there's confirmation. <laughs> For the Storm, retake the lead, and they lead Canterbury 12 points to 8. So Halligan convert from this position in the first half. And Dyer might have done likewise. Once again, though, didn't quite have the legs. It was on target, came up a little bit short. Melbourne, they lead Canterbury 12 points to 8. Norton turns it back on the inside to Stephen Price. I think, Gary, that Canterbury have got off a little bit more creative work around that ruck area and the dummy half area in particular because Melbourne Storm are doing that very well with the likes of Richard Swain, Brett Kamali and Robbie, uh, um, Robbie Ross coming in uh, around that ruck area. Yeah, I think Sherwin's doing pretty, a pretty good job around there since heaven has gone, but the little darts at a dummy half just haven't been the same since he has left the field. I think Canterbury really going to play Melbourne two off the ruck. Stott plays it, and now it comes to Stewart. Good pass to Ralph, they keep it alive. Silver saw the gap, tried to keep it going, got it back to Norton. Robert Ralph now getting backwards, he couldn't pick it up. Stewart could though, he runs, grubbers for the in goal. Kamali got a hand to it, and Marcus Pye cleans it up. Well, Marcus Pye's come from the other side of the field to pick that ball up, tremendous work. He can smell Steeden, can't he? He just knows what the ball's going to be. Well, it just shows you what a great winger that he is. He'll come down and cover himself, cover the fullback up, who's already had to go to the line to make the tackle. Evans takes it almost to the 20-metre line. Rorty going forward. Hughes it was to aim down low and cut his legs, and he missed him, and now they get a penalty. On the lead. On the lead. Too slow getting off the tackled player. Did a good job there, didn't he, Rorty? He just managed to hang out onto the player. The carry player was down there, he was pushing him and pushing him, and then got given the penalty. The fine touch, just about on the halfway line. Lazarus takes it up for the first hitter. Evans, quickly there. Stephen Price was trying to stop it first receiver but they couldn't do so and it came to Bowden eventually it takes it forward just outside the Canterbury 30 meter line as Kamali turns it back for Rua Got away from the first tackle before he's dragged down by a couple including Robert Ralph again Kamali at first receiver Stewart got up very quickly and left a small gap there in the line and Kamali was almost through it Swain shows it takes them on another good tackle by Price Ross goes back to the left hand side Kamali with men outside chasing through, pressure for El Masri. Oh, what a take above his head. It's right out, it's right out, goes out to 20. Beautiful take by the diminutive winger. He's done a great job for his side. They'll re-tap it from the 20-metre line to get us back into play. But look at this, under pressure, took it like an AFL full forward. Mate, I reckon Marcus Bayes virtually got the ball off him there. Have a look at this on the front on view. Watch him, he goes, comes in from behind, grabs the ball. If he could have got that down, that was going to be a try. No, it wouldn't have been because he'd already taken the ball on the full no, in his own in goal area, ball. and it would have been a tap from the 20-metre line. I would have played on. I'll tell you what, though, they've made a mistake here, yeah. the Bulldogs. Bad blue by Robbie Ralph. He knocked the ball forward. That gives the Melbourne Storm an opportunity no to assault the no Canterbury ball. line. A great head chance for the Storm. Kamali with the feed. Right. Gives it off to Anderson. And Martin oh. there. Oh, Robbie Ross got it once again. Shane Martini with a crunching tackle. Evans. Angling back in behind the ruck. 
Trying to open up to the left-hand side. That's where they go. Lazarus, Marquette, or was it uh, Rorty, in fact? Got it away to Matt Rua. Trying to crawl his way across the line. He got it within about an inch. Trouble getting back to his feet. Swain. Lazarus was the cutout man, the decoy man. Anderson tried to push away from the tackle of Norton. He couldn't do so. They try and work it from dummy half. Oh, Mueller's got out. I think you'll find it. Put the ball down with the left hand. Yes, he has. Simpkin says that's a four-pointer. And the Melbourne Storm open up this advantage to eight points. It all comes from that Robert Ralph mistake, doesn't it? Comes up with the mistake allowing the Melbourne side more ball. It's... Let me tell you, Matt Rua really did set this up well. But Lazo passes the ball out to Matt Rua. But then gets past Ricky Stewart, gets past, past Darren Brett, and he just is a fraction short, but the best thing he did here, he didn't panic, he got up and played the ball, which allows this bloke here, around about 15 to 20 metres to the right-hand side, and to score a very good try for the Melbourne side, Mule. Be a handy buffer, if he can kick it. He's hooked at Banley. Having an awful night with the boot. But they lead by eight points. 16 to eight. The Storm over the Bulldogs. So here comes the Storm. The Morley. Way to Kearney. 32 out. Looking for a try perhaps that might be just about enough to get them home tonight. Brewer. Just away from the tackle of Ricky Stewart who was left in his wake. Just inside the Canterbury 20 metre line. Marquette just settling it. Field goal, not of much importance at this point in time. Oh, the Morley with the kick, it bounced off Stephen Price, who got up to harass the halfback once again. It came to Lazarus, and Paul Simpkins has ruled six more tackles. I'm not quite sure that Stephen Price played at the ball there. Oh, I don't know if he did, but Lazo been in the right spot twice now to get those balls that have been come back as Steve Kearney makes a, a block busting run over five minutes. Of, be around about two metres from the try line. Desperate times to Canterbury. A good pass there from Kamali to Tony Martin, who was picked up in the end as he had the leap for the football. Still a couple of metres out. Swain gives it off to Rorty. Oh, got a good pass to Robbie Ross. If he'd taken it on the first attempt, I'm sure he would have scored. There was a yawning gap there just waiting for him. Kamali taps it on. Marquette, he got it away and they will score this time. Brad Watts to the left-hand side of the post. That might be just about enough for Melbourne. 20 points to eight now. With the conversion to come, the margin might be 14 points with just 15 minutes remaining. Well, it comes to that tackle on the sideline, doesn't it? Mistake there by Stephen Price. Great work there by the Melbourne side. They're just tremendous. Look, look at this catch, just flick it on. Great catch and pass once again. And Watts, like I said, he's been pretty impressive when he has been on the field. Goes right underneath the black dot. This just really runs sold into the wound. Well, Melbourne have come here tonight to play. Uh, great little try there by Watts. Nice little tap over there by Brett Camoli as well. But they are so That's much hungrier. They are so much more determined. They're winning to play the ball better. And that they are just hungrier to win tonight. It's important now that Canterbury, they've got about 15 minutes to go. Don't lose their heads. They've still got some time to play some attractive football. First try in the career, the first great career of Brad Watts. You'll remember that. He scored it in a rather impressive location. And an important time for his side as they try and break out of this slump. Four of their last six. Matt Geyer finally raises the flags. Came in a good time to his side now. 14 points in front. 22 to 8, they lead the Bulldogs. Darrell Halligan gets us back underway. Marcus By will bring it out for the Melbourne Storm. It's going to take something pretty special, Gary Freeman, for the Dogs to come back on this occasion. Well, I just think they have no really... Oh, hey, what's off. not going to happen Stand now. Stand in front of me. Stand in front. Stand in front of me. The ball's got to clear the rock. The referee there saying that you stood in front of me. And the ball's got to clear the ruck before you can move. Putting pressure again once on the Canterbury side, making too many tackles really against the side. As I've said all night, they can score tries from just about anywhere. I might have sold you a dummy, fellas. Terry Lamb just came over to me again and just said that you Hazard's had a 
a re-evaluation of Jason Hetherington's uh, shoulder and he will take no further part in the game and it doesn't look too good. Especially with the scoreline now, 14 points on the wrong side of it, Canterbury, it would be foolish to bring Jason Hetherington back out at this point in time. Watts, who scored the try and put them in front by that 14 points, has come up with a mistake, some good pressure from the Canterbury defence and... Boy, don't they need some inspiration now? It's Travis Norton who got up there quickly, and a good thing he made the tackle too because there were numbers on this right-hand side for Melbourne. Yeah, there certainly was. He just managed to get his left hand into where the ball was being carried by Watts. Otherwise, he was going to run into a nice big hole with only Rod Silver at the back there to stop him. Martini will play it just outside the Canterbury 20-metre line. So they get themselves back in it. They need a try, and... They need it very quickly. Sherwin gives it off to Darren Britt. Well, I've just been given the attendance here, the official attendance tonight, fellas. I'm full of information for you guys. <laughs> There's 16,308 people, which is a, a good crowd. And here's now Kenny with another mistake. You better hit the pause button, Steve, for a moment as to where in a cow picks up the crumbs from the mistake there by Canterbury as they try to spread it deep inside their own territory. Matt Rua, who's gone very close on a couple of occasions, Gets it back to within about three metres. Swain waits over him. Stephen Price should be put into the sin bin Get here. Out. He lashed out, out a long time after the tackle was completed. He stopped the play. And really, that was a professional foul if ever I've seen one. Yeah, I don't work out why he would do this. Just look well. <laughs> I just put the little left foot out there and make sure the referee doesn't see me. Guy from about 11 metres out. Ricky Stewart has had a couple of words to Paul Simpkins in this last five minutes. As has Darren Britt, but it's been to little effect. Been unhappy with a couple of things that have gone against them, but really, they've been their own worst enemy here in the second half. A number of penalties to Melbourne as the Storm brought the ball back out from inside their own 20, and they've picked up plenty of easy metres. 24 points to eight. 16 points the difference now between the Storm and the Bulldogs. Just going, just going back to that crowd. 16,308. Uh, it has proved well for Canterbury. Ten minutes left here at Stadium Australia. And the game you would think certainly gone from Canterbury's grasp now. It's Lazarus. Brings it back once again. He knows he's only got perhaps ten or so games left in his career and if he continues this sort of form, the Storm are certainly going to be a side to stop in the coming weeks and, of course, the finals. That's the scary part about it. You know, in the finals time, you've got to be able to score tries and produce them, that. And if their force could get on the top of this, and this little halfback can play the sort of game he's had today, I'll tell you what, they are going to be very hard to do. Canterbury heading to just their second loss here at Stadium Australia in 1999. I'll tell you what, the Melbourne Storm aren't done with yet as far as points are concerned. They've got... Just over nine minutes left here and, and score one at least, perhaps not maybe two or three. And will he blow this score line out? Smith waits a dummy half. El Masri. Martini, helped up by Aaron Hewitt, who's picked up a double tonight. Five tries to one, the storm have scored. It has been comprehensive and really it could have been around about 30 points if it had not been for Matt Guy's poor form of the boot. Mule has actually stolen that ball too. One-on-one -on -one tackle. Scored two they tries. Again. Scored two tries and a stolen ball. Lazarus. Swain. Long pass. They got up quickly, but then the defence waited. Hughes and Stewart were up there to try and stop them, but it came back to Macau. He has the arms free. Can't get it away as he's harassed by Clyde and Reardon there. Just 10 metres out. Kamali. Anderson, cut out pass, a good one too to Robbie Ross. Oh, gives it away. Brad Watts, I think you'll find as he's taken the corner post as he got there. He's picked up his second try. A conversation now. They'll go to the video referee to make a bird of it. Dennis. I think you'll find That's he scored it though. Cut out ball, the decoy man worked, and Brad Watts got me, Dennis. Out there on that left wing. Might have picked up his second try. Yeah, I That's think he touch. has. Great ball once again. Robbie Ross receiving the ball in behind. And does he touch the post? I think it's actually touched by Al Mazari. It is. Oh, he's out. He, he is, is out. out. 
That good left foot yeah. on the touch and goal line, and a good thing they went to the video referee. It was good decision actually by the lines, but to say, I think he might have touched either the, the, the flag or the line, and they, they've done that. I think they've all now. No, that's not, wait, a go, wait, wait, not wait, going wait, to be a try. The red letters as opposed to the green ones. And here it is again. Oh, Masri with that outstretched arm coming across. Darren Smith it is who forces him across the line and there, just before he got the ball down. It's been a great innovation for rugby league, the, the video referee. I don't think they get too many wrong. Of course, we a couple of controversial ones every now and again. There was one this afternoon between the Broncos and the Warriors. But they get most of them wrong, obviously. A penalty and a quick tap taken by Brent Sherwin. He's filled it well, hasn't he, for Hetherington? Stewart. He's had many options to run as he did last week, close to the line. Canterbury. Interesting to go back through the stats after the game and see how many tackles they've had inside the Melbourne Storm's 20 metre line. I think you might be able to count them on one hand. Martini. He gets to that point just now on the 20 metre line. Canterbury can see they spent 63% of the game inside their own half. Sherwin races up to dummy half. Fires a low pass. Travis Norton picks it up. Hughes gives it back to Norton. It bounces down. Stewart put the foot out. Touched by a Melbourne Storm player. And Evans is offside. Offside. This, this is where you'll see the Canterbury side straight away. They'll just tap the ball and get on with the game. Silver takes the quick tap and gives it off to Stephen Price. Ooh, beat the tackle of Evans. He beat a couple of more tacklers as well and reached out to score a try for the Bulldogs. Jeez, it was pretty soft. Very, very soft, and it's something that Chris Anderson would not be very happy about. Knowing that his side has played pretty well here tonight, especially around the ruck area, Rod Silver taps the ball, just give it, gives it the prize. Gets out some pretty easy tackles here. Robbie Ross, Tower and Nico, and Evans goes out for a try. Yeah, well, we're going to give Steve Price a bit of a wrap here. Um, turning and taking two, even three Melbourne Storm players, twisting over for a try, and... Um, Congratulations to Steve Price, but it might be all too late, although there is six minutes left and Canterbury are the kings of the comebacks, aren't they, fellas? Well, well, this will be a bit tough, though, this one, I think, tonight, the way they're playing. Nelligan won't waste any time. He drills it over the black dot. And it's 24 points to 12, or sorry, 24 points to 14, rather, of course, with a conversion. Five minutes left, and well, stranger things have happened. Happened a couple of times at the Sydney Football Stadium last year, and they were in a very similar spot against Parramatta. You can't rule them out. I'll tell you what, I'll be taking the short odds though about Melbourne. They won't lose this one from here. <laughs> How many kicks did you say that goal was going to get tonight? Oh, exactly. How many did he miss? <laughs> Pretty much close range. Hughes takes it back to the 30 metre line. If they score on this set of six, we've got a game. Sherwin, the first receiver. Well, in this stage of the game, I think Canterbury, they'll just throw the ball around and Melbourne really got to tighten up their defence to try and stop it from scoring tries from anywhere in the field. Norton looking for runners. There were none coming. They need a Rod Silver break. Here he is at dummy half. The try scorer. Price takes it forward. Picks up some good metres as he goes towards the halfway line. Still a couple of tackles left in this set of six. Stewart at first receiver will take it to the line. Taking the on, he had runners to his right-hand side. Both Sherwin and Reardon were there, but he took the tackle. Now here's Norton, grubbing behind the line for himself. He'll almost get the ball back. On the toe it goes. El Masri flying. He picked it up. He scores a try for Canterbury. Do we have a miracle finish coming once again? Ah, oh, Paul Simpkins. He says that's a try. El Masri, he was almost offside, but he they it. Oh, it's great vision there. They knew that Ricky Stewart had been caught at the marker play there and hit the play of the ball. And the Travis thought, saw they were short, they dropped back the wheels, put the little kick in. Robbie Ross did his utmost to get to the ball. Another kick through. He's on side now, Masri. Beautiful little bounce there. The scores a good try by the Canterbury Doggies. The back, Steve Watermark. Well, this is for all the kids watching football that want to play first grade one day. You just never give in. Great work there by Travis Norton. And great anticipation, too, by Hazem El Masri. Wonderful try. The Dogs are coming back, fellas. Halligan puts them within range over the black dot. 
Oh, it's just pretty to watch, but it's good vision here by Travis Norton. They know that they were short, put the ball on, nothing much that Watts could have done about that, and the same with Tony Martin, who tried to cover up the kick. You've 24 picked them. points to 20. Well, I said it was possible. I didn't really believe it, though. <laughs> You've picked them all tonight, was I? <laughs> Three minutes left here, and just four points in it. They're unbelievable, Canterbury. Stewart. There's time. There's more than enough time. Deep kickoff. It comes down to Martini. And Clyde will bring it back. And Melbourne were doing it in a canter. That was probably the problem they had, that they knew they had the game wrapped up. They forgot to defend and stopped to, to really get on top of the opposition straight away. They Sheldon can't give away penalty. Stewart, the back line, fan to the left-hand side. Silver, a pass from Hughes. Oh, three. Numbers to the left there. If they could have kept it going, they'd have made a long break. Here it comes. Oh, that might be the pass that might be just oh, about enough back. for Melbourne to hang on to. Norton forced it. Price couldn't hang on to it. Well, all they're going to do now is probably get one more set of six at the Melbourne Storm to so make sure they don't drop it on that first and second tackle, the Canterbury Bulldogs. The field goal still no use for them. They need to work it and try and get the ball back with the goal line dropout, perhaps, if they can work it close to the line. Bowden taking it towards the post, driven backwards. Scott and Price combined. Swain up dummy half. Lazarus knows, he knows where they need to go. Kamali, darting. We might have visions of a try to finish it off. Swain gives it off to Anderson. Short pass, and Moore looking for a hat trick. Bobbled it. Monstered by a trio of Bulldogs on the last tackle now. Kamali, there's the grubber. They're looking for that repeat set of six. Stewart, did he get it back? Forced back now, in behind no, no, the try no, no, no. line. He got it grounded in the field. Grounded in the field. And it will be a goal line dropout. Oh, great vision, Kamali. This will be a short 10 metre one here. Takes it quickly to the left hand side. Pressure coming up from Moore. He didn't field it. It came off the legs there of Kamali as he tried to throw the ball back in, and Melbourne will get it. Less than 60 seconds left. They still trail by four points. A terrific goal line dropout by Stewart. Oh, once again, all it is is about vision when you play rugby league. See what you can do. This is the tackle. He gets caught at the end goal. He goes, well, what can I do? How do we get the ball back? A short one. Let's have a look at it here. Beautiful. Plenty of height. The players get through. The best thing about it, they don't stop. They go after the ball. There was just nothing what Kamali could have done there. Stewart has tried a handful of short kicks throughout this game, and none of them have come off, but look for one right here. El Masri. Takes it midfield. 25 out from his own line. 31 seconds left. Stewart doesn't kick on this occasion. Gives it to Clyde, but a good tackle down low. Paul Marquette. Sherwin to Stewart. Here's the kick. Chipping in behind the line. Marquette. He made the previous tackle. He got back there to cover. What a game from the second rower. Oh, he's had a tremendous game, especially in defence and running into holes. Ricky Stewart, I thought then, probably would have passed the ball out a little bit wide. They had plenty of men on the outside of him. Lazarus. As the siren will sound, and Melbourne hang on to win a nail-biter, as it turns out. Oh, they were doing it so comfortably, but two tries in two minutes to the Bulldogs put them right back in it. And that full-time, Melbourne have beaten the Bulldogs 24 points to 20. This has been a production of Fox Sports in partnership with the National Rugby League.